Hello, welcome to the Flex Power Bundle RFP pre-bid presentation. My name is Krista Davis. I'm the Director of Energy Supply and Market Operations Strategy, and I will help moderate the pre-bid presentation. This pre-bid presentation is provided for information only. Respondents are directed to the RFP document for all specifications and requirements concerning the solicitation. In the case of conflict between the information provided in this pre-bid presentation and the information provided in the RFP, the information provided in the RFP document shall govern. Before we get started, I'd like to go over our agenda, and then I will introduce you to the team. In this presentation, we will talk about our flexible path journey, look at the integrated approach of the Flex Power Bundle, we will discuss the key components of the RFP and product requirements, go over the proposal format and submittal process, provide a portal overview, and we will discuss the proposal evaluation and timeline. On our next slide, I will introduce our team. First, I'd like to introduce Kevin Paulo. He will help set the stage for this discussion. Kevin? Thank you, Krista. My name is Kevin Paulo. I am the Interim Vice President for Energy Supply and Market Operations. As Krista said, I'd like to welcome you to today's uh, pre-bid presentation. CPS Energy is the nation's largest municipally owned utility providing both electric and natural gas service. We serve more than or nearly 850,000 electric customers and 350,000 natural gas customers in and around the city of San Antonio, Texas. We're very excited today to talk about our request for proposal for our Flex Power Bundle initiative. We are on our flexible path journey. You'll hear more about that uh, in a coming slide, but that is our overarching strategy to transform our generation fleet to lower and non-emitting resources over the next several years. Flex Power Bundle is our next step on that journey. We're very excited for this strategic initiative. Uh, you'll hear more about the, this request for proposal today, but we are very excited to have uh, see the interest uh, from our potential partners, and we welcome you to this presentation and look very forward to your proposals and to potential partnerships as we move further along our journey. And with that, I'll turn it back to Krista. Thank you, Kevin. Next, I'd like to introduce John Kossub. Thanks, Krista. Good day, everyone. My name is John Kossup. I am the Senior Director of Energy Portfolio Analytics for CPS Energy. My role in the RFP development was to manage a team that generated the technical aspects of the RFP related to the operational and technical requirements, the long-range resource needs, and how those needs fit into our generation plan. I'll turn it back over to Krista. Thanks, John. And again, my name is Krista Davis. I'm the Director of Energy Supply and Market Operations Strategy. I've been with CPS Energy for 17 years, and I am leading our Flex Power Bundle program. Next, I'd like to introduce Tosif Mohammed. Hello, everyone. This is Tosif Mohammed. I'm a program manager with Energy Supply and Market Operations Group with CPS Energy. I've been with the company for almost eight years now, and I'm serving as a business lead for the Flex Power Bundle project. Over to you, Krista. Thanks, Tosif. Next, I'd like to introduce Rosalinda Ramirez. Rosalinda? Hello, my name is Rosalinda Ramirez. I'm a category manager in supply chain, and I will be assisting and overseeing the RFP process. Thank you, Krista. Thanks, Rosalinda. Next, I'll introduce Paul Maxwell. Thanks, Krista. Uh, hello, everyone. Paul Maxwell. I'm a managing director with Black & Beach Management Consulting. I'm in our strategic advisory group. I've got more than 20 years of experience with large-scale power project development, finance, and procurement and I'm leading Black & Beach's efforts in uh, uh, supporting the issuance of the RFP evaluation of proposals. Back to you, Krista. Thank you, Paul. And next, I'd like to introduce Shanu Thomas. Thank you, Krista. Hello, everyone. My name is Shanu Thomas, and I'm a consultant with Black & Beach Management Consulting. At Black & Beach, I support our strategic advisory and connected customer offerings with a background in distributed energy resources and utility of the future. On this project, I'm supporting project execution through RFP development and evaluation, as well as leading process oversight. Thank you. Our president and CEO, Paula Gold-Williams, launched our Flexible Path back in 2018. Our Flexible Path strategy will guide us through the next several decades as we transform our integrated resources. We've already had some big milestones over the past years, including retiring our Dealey Coal Plant at the end of 2018. Also, San Antonio was ranked number one for solar in Texas by Environment America's 2020 Shining Cities Report. In the summer of 2019, we introduced our Flex Power Bundle, which will help us identify resources to eventually replace some of our aging gas fleet. We also exceeded our SEP Energy Efficiency Savings Goal to save 770 megawatts by 2020. 
with actual savings of 845 megawatts ahead of schedule and under budget. This summer, we released our Flex Power Bundle RFI. We received nearly 200 responses from companies around the globe. And most recently, we launched our Flex Power Bundle RFP on November 30th. As I mentioned on the previous slide, the Flex Power Bundle was designed to help us transition from some of our aging gas plants. Our Bronig plant is more than 50 years old and will need to eventually be replaced later this decade. We want to be ready for that transition, and our Flex Power Bundle is designed to be an integrated approach to add up to 900 megawatts of solar, 50 megawatts of energy storage, and up to 500 megawatts of all source firming capacity. This approach will transition us to a cleaner fleet while also maintaining our reliability. Next, I will turn it over to John Kossub. The two charts uh, are an illustration of a typical summer day and a typical winter day. The charts show CPS Energy retail customer demand and our resource mix as it stands today before the Flex Power Bundle. Now, the new Flex Power Bundle solar and storage resources will add to the existing solar in yellow and to the existing storage resource base. Storage you can just barely see in the kind of a, an orange color. The new Flex Power Bundle firming resources will eventually replace some of our existing firming resources shown there in blue. Those are the load following resources following the load line there at the top of the, of the chart. I want to note that the storage deployment at the hours shown is illustrative. It's just matching up kind of the peak hours but that storage could be deployed at different hours in actual operation. In Exhibit C of the RFP, you will find information on those valuable hours. The table is a heat map where the cell colors change depending on the value, with less value shown in green, greater value shown in yellow, and more the most valuable hours shown in red. The underlying data used to create this heat map uh, was from an internal CPS Energy Power Price forecast. And a forecast for years 2025 and 2030 were provided, giving an indication of value for a typical day for every month of the year. All right, now we're going to transition to the key components of the Flex Power Bundle. Shown in this slide are the solar and storage components. It's an illustration of the products in the Flex Power Bundle that are eligible for a proposal in response to the RFP. The solar and storage resources are eligible at the transmission the distribution, and community scale. And the third component in the Flex Power Bundle is firming capacity. And this slide illustrates uh, the firming products that are eligible in the proposal uh, in response to the RFP. The firming products are eligible at transmission and distribution scale. Next, uh, Paul Maxwell will cover the specific eligibility requirements regarding size limits, interconnection requirements, delivery point requirements, and other items. Now I'll turn it over to Paul Maxwell. Thank you, John. Now let's take a more detailed look at the specific product requirements. Here we have the solar PV product table from the RFP. Solar PV products consist of PV only and PV plus integrated storage technologies, which are further disaggregated into specific transmission scale, distribution scale, and community solar products. From each respondent, CPS Energy is seeking unit contingent energy and RECs, with the underlying resource owned by the respondent and with the resource being either existing or planned new. The resource must be available to CPS Energy for all hours over a term ranging from 10 to 25 years and with the first delivery as soon as possible. The size, interconnection, and delivery point specifications are important. Transmission scale resources must be 50 megawatts or larger and interconnected to the ERCOT grid or the CPS Energy bulk electric system. Distribution scale resources must be 10 megawatts or smaller and at least 5 megawatts, either alone or in aggregation. They must be interconnected to the CPS Energy distribution system. With respect to delivery point, there are two required for each product and therefore two prices that must be offered. Energy from the transmission scale resources must be quoted for delivery at the resource node and also at one of two delivery nodes, either HB North or HB South. Energy from distribution scale resources must be quoted for delivery at one of two resource nodes, either the DGR or SODG, and at the CPS Energy Delivery Node. Since two prices must be quoted, and every different price requires a different proposal, two proposals will be required for each resource. As a final note, there are multiple prices required for solar plus storage resources, 
but they do not result in additional proposals. A single or melded energy price must be quoted and will be used for price evaluation. In addition, the melded price must be disaggregated into a price for energy from the solar component of the resource and a price for capacity from the storage component of the resource. These prices will be used by CPS Energy for information only and will not be used in the price evaluation. Here we have the standalone storage product table from the RFP. The specifications are similar to the PV solar products, except that the transmission scale resources must be smaller, 10 megawatts minimum. Also, a capacity price must be quoted instead of an energy price. Again, prices at both resource and delivery nodes must be quoted. And here we have the firming products table from the RFP. The ownership, status, access, delivery, and interconnection specifications are similar to the standalone storage products. Again, prices at both resource and delivery nodes must be quoted. The far left column is the transmission scale firming product, which must be available for dispatch by CPS Energy at any time. The far right column is a similar firming product at the distribution scale. The remaining products are transmission scale with shorter firming durations. The TF4 and TF6 products are needed only for up to four and six hours per day respectively. The TF12 product must be available for dispatch by CPS Energy at any time, but would not be dispatched for more than 12 hours at a time. The firming products can be delivered from low emitting gas fired resources, or solar plus storage resources, or standalone storage resources, except for the TF12 product, which must be delivered from a long duration energy storage resource. It's important to note that the contract term for a gas fired resource is limited to 10 years. Now let's turn to the special interconnection requirements for resources that will be interconnected to the CPS Energy bulk electric system. For these resources, there are special siting requirements. The respondent must obtain and transfer to CPS Energy the transmission easements, switchyard property, and access to the switchyard within their property. The switchyard must be within one mile of an existing transmission line, and the respondent must obtain all necessary transmission easements, switchyard property, and access required from landowners. These requirements help ensure that CPS Energy can execute its responsibilities with respect to the interconnection on a timely basis and within reasonable cost. In addition to the siting requirements for interconnection to the CPS Energy Bulk Electric System, there are design and other requirements for interconnection to the CPS Energy Distribution System. These requirements are specified in the CPS Energy Distribution Generation Manual, which is available via the link provided in the RFP. Thank you, Paul. Now we'd like to speak a bit to the logistics of the proposal submittal. Given the volume of proposals we are expecting, we ask that you please take note and adhere to these format requirements as it is necessary for a thorough evaluation process. As a reminder, all proposals must be submitted through the Power Advocate portal. They will not be accepted via email or any other method. One proposal is considered the combination of information on the portal, including information on the commercial, technical, and pricing tabs, and additional documentation. Finally, we understand that some respondents may have more than one proposal they would like to submit. In those cases, please submit them according to the table seen here. And this language can also be found on page 15 of the RFP. A single construction phase of a resource at one site is considered one proposal. If another project has different capacity or initial, different initial delivery year or point of delivery or price, that should be considered a different proposal. Multiple construction phases at one site should be submitted as multiple proposals. A different product at the same site should also be considered a different proposal. And finally, a different site, even if the same product, should be submitted as a different proposal. Another key submittal requirement is to use the proposal naming tool provided as part of the RFP documents on the portal. Again, this is important for our evaluation process, so we ask that you please adhere to this. And if you have any questions, you can submit them through the portal, and we will answer them as quickly as possible. When you open the Excel document titled Proposal Naming Tool, you will see instructions on how to create the file name you should use when uploading your proposal. It's a combination of product type, respondent name, project name, project capacity, delivery year, and point of delivery as seen in the screenshot. This is the name to be used on all documents you upload as part of your response. You may append the file name with additional detail if needed, but please follow this name and convention for all attachments. As another reminder, all communication, including clarifying questions or logistical questions, must go through the portal. Shown here is a screenshot of how to send a message via the portal. 
and additional information can be found in the self-help section on the messaging page or the help button at the top right of the landing page. Finally, as questions continue to come through as part of the Q&A process with RFP, we will respond via the messaging tool and post a frequently asked questions document as needed on the portal. And now I'll turn it over to Rosalinda. Thank you, Shanu. I'd like to start by addressing three disclosures on the RFP. I will start by addressing the Texas Public Records Act. Respondent agrees to abide by the Public Information Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 552. Any information that is considered confidential should be designated by marking confidential at the top of each effective page, as well as on the Power Advocate portal where indicated. If an open record request is submitted to CPS Energy for this RFP, the respondent shall be notified and have an opportunity to object to disclose information. Executive Order 13920. Respondent agrees to comply with the Presidential Executive Order 13920 titled Securing the United States Bulk Power System, BPS, which aims to prevent foreign adversaries from posing an undue risk to the U.S. bulk power system. Restrictions on communications. Restrictions on communications are in effect. Respondents are prohibited from communicating with any CPS Energy employee, staff, or board member. You may, however, submit any technical questions you have regarding this RFP to the Power Advocate Portal. Violation of this provision may result in disqualification. I will now turn over the presentation to Tosif. Thank you, Rosalinda. Hello, everyone. This is Tosif again. I'll be going through the next few slides with you all. I will go through proposal evaluation first and then talk about key milestones for the FlexPower Bundle RFP. First and foremost, the solicitation process will comply with CPS Energy's procurement policies and procedures. The evaluation process will include both qualitative and quantitative components. The evaluation process begins with threshold screening. The objective of this particular process will be to screen proposals that do not meet basic requirements of the solicitation, such as the proposed project is not compliant with the product definitions, as mentioned in the RFP, or a substantial number of data fields in the RFP portal are incomplete, or key information necessary to complete a comprehensive evaluation is either missing or has not been uploaded to the RFP portal. Therefore, we encourage respondents to supply data in all the fields on the RFP portal. This will ensure CPS Energy has all the information to evaluate the submitted proposal. Moving on, the proposals that pass the threshold screening will then enter a detailed qualitative and quantitative evaluation. In evaluating proposals, CPS Energy, in its sole discretion, will assign weight and importance to the evaluation criteria, which includes project feasibility, project capability, counterparty profile, community stewardship, price, and overall cost to CPS Energy. More details about these criteria can be found in the RFP document. Let me go through the RFP timeline now. As you may already be aware, the FlexPAR bundle RFP was issued on November 30th, 2020. This pre-bid recording will be posted on the FlexPAR bundle landing page on December 9th. The deadline to submit questions through the RFP portal is January 12th, 2021. And the key date that I would like to bring y'all's attention to is February 1st. The responses for the FlexPAR bundle RFP will be due on February 1st, 2021, 3 p.m. Central. As Krista and Kevin mentioned earlier, the FlexPower bundle is a next step towards the transition to cleaner, greener resources. CPS Energy is very excited about this project, and we look forward to evaluating all the proposals. Before we conclude our presentation today, I want to also talk about our guiding pillars. At CPS Energy, we are always thinking about how do we make sure we are doing the right thing for our community and our customers while keeping everything in balance. CPS Energy has six primary pillars, which are listed here. Reliability, customer affordability, security, safety, environmental responsibility, and resiliency. With financial responsibility serving as a foundation of our guiding pillars. As mentioned in the previous slides, the FlexPower bundle will support all of the CPS Energy's guiding pillars with an emphasis on reliability, customer affordability, and last but not the least, 
environmental responsibility. That concludes my section of the presentation. Over to you, Krista. Thank you, Tosif. That concludes our presentation. Please visit our website, cpsenergy.com forward slash flex RFP for more information. A link to the Power Advocate portal can be found at that site as well as other information about the Flex Power Bundle. We'd like to thank you again for joining us on this journey and look forward to your response.